is the exclusive Canadian distributor for the 88 products, and he's the only one that got trained by Mr. Romano himself, who he will let you know about in a minute. So, I won't say anymore. Yeah, Go ahead, you. Joseph. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, good evening, everyone. Bonsoir. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, uh, so we'll start with uh, ADA. ADA was started by Mr. Amano about 25 years ago. And uh, he started ADA uh, on the concept of he wanted to make plants grow underwater. Because he said that he goes to the pet store, he buys plants, and after three weeks the plants die. And then he goes back to the store again. So it becomes what we call a disposable plant rather than a real plant. And he couldn't find a way how to make plants grow underwater until he found out that he started putting carbonated soda water. And carbonated wow. soda water is actually carbonated or CO2 injected with water. And that started to make his plants grow. Mm -hmm. And then he started to tweak a little bit more on how to put CO2 into the water without killing the fish. He said too much CO2 would kill the fish and too little CO2 won't make your plants grow. So you gotta have the balance of both. Not too much CO2, not too much oxygen. Just enough for the plants to grow and enough for the plant for the fish to, to live together. And then he started to, to uh, experiment on the substrate. He said that uh, gravel will not make uh, uh, plants grow because gravel is too heavy, it's too dense, and the roots won't be able to penetrate. So they came up with a substitute kind of uh, soil. It's called substrate. And it's artificially made out of real soil. But the good thing about ADA soil is that it does not turn into mud after six months. Okay? It stays in a granular form even after five years. And that's guaranteed by ADA. Not like other people who are copying the substrate of ADA. These substrates will turn into mud in six months. They just crumble into uh, dirt. And I'll explain to you also in a minute why uh, it has to stay in that form, in this granular form. Why does it have to stay in granular form? I'll explain to you in a minute. Okay? So that's the introduction on the ADA and how Mr. Mao started the business about 25 years ago. Later, during uh, his experiments, he looked at his aquarium and he sees a lot of silicon. You know, the old-fashioned way of making aquariums, they got a lot of silicon, and then they have also this black strip of uh, plastic in here, another black strip at the bottom, and he doesn't like it. He said, it distracts me when I look at the tank. You know, I want to see the tank only with plants and fish without all the trimmings and without the silicon on the side. So he then started to invent or started to make tanks like this. If you take a look at this tank, this tank does have silicon. It does have silicon, but it's very neatly placed. I don't know how they do it either. They don't want to tell me how to do it. <laughs> I guess it's their trade secret, but they told me that all the glass are cut by laser and then the putting of the glue are all machine made. So it's not done by human, it's done by machine. And look at how nice and neat it is, okay? So you want to see your tank, it has to be in this quality because anything inside the tank Okay, will look nicer, and especially if the water is all the way up to here. You don't see any water line here. When you don't see any water line, it's like the fish is actually swimming in the air. Yeah. Right? So that's what they want to produce. They want to produce a tank that is all the water all the way up to here, and then the fish is actually swimming as if there's no water inside. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to do. And what they want to do next is they want to make a miniature landscape with small trees and small stones, so that as if the fish are the birds flying through your mountainscape. Okay, so that's the idea. And you know, Japan, in residential Japan is very expensive, especially in Tokyo downtown. Very, very expensive. So the smaller the size of the miniature landscape, the better it is for them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why everything in Japan is small. The radio is small, everything is small. So they want to tank also this small, but the miniature landscape is so small that even the fish inside the tank have to be small also. And that's what's driving the small fish prices go up. Everybody's now going for the small fish and not anymore for the big fish. Um, in, in, in probably 10 years ago, 15 years ago, everybody's going for the big one. Arowana, you know, the, those big arowana that eat mice and cockroaches, that's gone. Nobody wants that anymore. Everybody wants to go for small fish. But they want small fish 
that actually schools together. So it's like a group of birds flying through the landscape. That's what they want to do now. And it's all the same kind of fish. They don't mix fish anymore. It's all one kind of fish. So there's one school of fish flying through the landscape. Okay? Now, the next thing that Mr. Manuel said also is that the glass has to be good, good quality glass. And a lot of people think that the glass that we have here, you can see the cross section of the glass. It's not green. It's not green. It's actually white or bluish in color. And the main reason why is that this glass is actually crystal. It's more crystal than glass. If you see green tint, it's a high iron content. So if you go look at the maybe Home Depot, you take a look at the glass, look at a cross section, you see green. That's because it's high iron content. But this glass is more like the Sorovsky crystal that you see in, in Phil's house. The Sorovsky crystal is glass, okay? It's a crystal glass, and you don't see that green. So that's why it's white. And when you have this kind of uh, glass, okay, and you have very little silicon, it makes as if there's no glass. That's what they want to do. They, there's no glass in front of you. It's just water. It's just air with the fish swimming in, 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 the, in the tank. Okay? So that's what the ABA is known for, is this type of glass. Uh, this is called the uh, Nature Aquarium Garden, Garden Cube. Okay? But the, you know, they, they've come up with the lower, lower quality glass, which is also available by Spark TV uh, in uh, September this year or fall this year. They kind of come up with a second type of glass that is just as just as good, but maybe lower price. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start up a uh, Iwabumi setup here. And Iwabumi is what we call a mountainscape setup. And uh, Mount Iwa stands for stone, and Bumi stands for the art of arranging stones. So Iwabumi becomes art of arranging stones. Okay. And we'll start up with that. And uh, the first thing we got to do is put the foundation. The most important thing in the tank is the foundation of the substrate. Why? Uh, the substrate tends to compact in time. Like what I said earlier, uh, when it becomes muddy, uh, it compacts. And when it compacts, it uh, lessens the amount of oxygen inside the substrate. And what lives in the substrate are bacteria. Those are beneficial bacteria. And if you deprive uh, yourself of oxygen, the first thing dies are the bacteria. So if the bacteria dies, then you would have the next effect. Um, you go through the what they call the nitrification cycle. The uh, nitrification cycle is the normal, normal uh, cycle where bacteria eats the fish poo and converts them to ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Now, if you don't have bacteria that is inside your tank, your ammonia level goes up. And if your ammonia level goes up, that's where you will start to have algae. The first thing, the first thing that you get ammonia presence in your tank is you have algae. Okay, and I'll explain to you later what causes algae, but that's one of them, it's ammonia. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to, we want to put the substance inside your tank to make sure that the ammonia doesn't go up because your bacteria are constantly alive. And what do we do? We have to use this particular property called power sand. Okay, again, this is an invention made by ABA, which they actually, uh, they actually, through 25 years of research, found out that using this kind of uh, material for the bottom of the substrate increases presence of bacteria or colonizing bacteria. This kind of bacteria will eliminate the excess of uh, excessive of ammonia, which causes algae. Okay, so this uh, material here is actually porous in in material. Maybe I can pass one and can everybody, uh, uh, you know, maybe some people can you can share. Okay. This is a very porous material, it's very light. So I'm gonna pour this in. It's a light material, like this. Do you want to explain the M in uh, different sizes? Yeah, so... 
There are uh, basically three sizes available for ABA power set. The first one is that I'm using right now is M. Uh, M is for medium, and it means the granular size of this of the power stand is Thank the you. size. And M is for 30 six cm and up to 30 cm of water, the depth of the water, from 30 cm to 36 cm. This one is 36 cm, so we use M. If you want higher than 36 m, oh sorry, it's 40 40 to 60 cm this size. Okay, and if you want the a lower size or uh, the, tank, the tank height is lower, then you go for S. And if your tank size is uh, the depth is higher, then then you go for L or large. Okay, yeah. So that's uh, that's the, the next thing we do is uh, we we want to push the we want to push this away from the away from the uh, from the perimeter of the tank because you don't want the user to see or the viewer to see this this set, this kind of material you want it to hide it away so you kind of push it away to the back and uh, you don't need to you don't need to have a user at the back so you can actually push it to the back that's fine but just away from the from the side and away from the front okay then the next thing we do is uh, we add bacteria uh, it's called Bacter 100 Okay, let me see. Where's my glasses? <laughs> All right, bacteria. This is uh, bacteria in uh, suspended animation stage. It, it cannot be. It's a, it, ca it cannot. We, I cannot import this into Canada if it's live bacteria. That means it's in a dry state, so it's not really alive. And what you do is for this size of tank, you only need three scoops of about this big. That's all you need. It has uh, three, 100 types of bacteria inside, and you kind of just sprinkle it like this. Yeah, that's one. That's two. And that's three. Okay, now, bacteria is in sleeping state. So you need something to wake them up. Okay, because if you don't put something to wake them up, then it will remain sleeping all the time. Then it's no use to your tank. So what you do is you need to buy a little bit of what we call Tourmaline BC. Now, Tourmaline BC is a semi-precious stone that when mixed with water, it actually sends out some sort of a static energy. And the static energy would electrify the bacteria and then the bacteria will wake up. Okay, so you would need also uh, three scoops of this. Okay, so you put it on top of the bacteria. In the in the pamphlet of um, Mr. Amano, they told us to put about nine scoop of Thermidin BC, but I never use nine scoop. I always just use three scoops, and it's. It works. It wakes. It wakes up the bacteria already with three scoops. Okay. Now the last one that you need to put is clear super. Okay. Now, all of this is actually on my website, and if you want to talk to Phil about it, also he knows about it too. And clear super are the initial food you need to give to the bacteria. See, everything I import to Canada has to be in sterile condition, otherwise the the government would confiscate everything. Everything that comes in has to be inspected. And when they see something that is not clean, they will confiscate it. So everything I import is sterile. Now, if your bacteria is, when they wake up and they don't find any food because your tank is so clean, then they die immediately because they don't have any food. They won't multiply. So you need to put what we call clear super, and this one will make the bacteria, you know, have the initial food. Again, just three scoops of this. And put like this. Now, when mixed with water, this will start uh, making the bacteria grow. That's it. Okay, now there are two optional things that you can put. Um, peanut P and peanut W. These are German, uh, these are German products. Uh, not anymore being promoted by ADA, but uh, ADA used to promote this. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why they stopped promoting this, but I've used this a lot in the past and it's very good. 
uh, W, pinac W adds more oxygen into the water, okay? And pinac P adds hormonal growth. That means it adds growth for the roots, for the plants. So it will, in, you know, as it will accelerate root development. So it would be good for you to add. And, you know, three scoops only is what you need. Um, we don't sell it in scoops. But Phil can sell it to you. I don't sell this in scoops, but you can go to Phil and Phil can sell you in scoops. Because uh, one bottle like this is about $65, and you don't want to buy a $65 bottle just for three scoops of a tank like this, right? So you don't need to buy, uh, you don't need to buy three scoops. You don't need to buy a whole bottle, just buy three scoops. Okay, so I'll just put one. And if you're having uh, some issues with your fish, like you see your fish is uh, gasping for air. Uh, that means not enough oxygen in the water. You can also use this. It will automatically increase oxygen level. And that will help your, your fish too. Okay, and PNAPW is for the root development, which I will also put three. And that is what we call the foundation of the, of the tank. Okay, now, you can see that why did we put porous material underneath? Because we want to induce oxygen level, and that's what's important, is oxygen. When you don't have this porous material, and you use gravel, for example, the gravel is very dense, and it will compact in time, and when it compacts in time, then there's no oxygen level inside the, inside the gravel, and then all the roots will die. So, um, plants breathe oxygen in the roots, but they breathe carbon dioxide in their leaves, okay? So two things, the roots actually absorb oxygen, but the, the leaves actually absorb carbon dioxide, and then they release out oxygen for the fish. So that's, what, uh, that's why we need this porous material to absorb oxygen. All right, next is uh, we're going for the substrate, which is this one here. Again, as I said earlier, uh, ABA invented this about maybe 15 years ago. Uh, earlier than that, they were doing also gravel and it's not successful for them to raise plants. So that's why they started inventing uh, this type of material. And uh, this material is the number one now in the world. There's no other substitute for substrate. A lot of people or a lot of uh, manufacturers who try to imitate uh, ABA, but cannot be successful in terms of coming up with the maintaining of granular form after one year. This one is up even five years, you can maintain it in granular form. Okay, so, so what we do here is to prevent uh, this power sand from going out, we're going to pour power with a substrate all around here first, so it doesn't let this uh, power sand escape. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So, uh, let's take this out first. Or, yeah. But the, the people who are filming wouldn't be able to see this whole light. So we're gonna put the substrate around first, so it does not uh, distract the power sand. There you go. So once it's there, then you can cover it up with the substrate all, all around. And usually one bag of uh, nine liter is enough uh, for a tank like this. And, and by the way, this size of a tank, it's uh, a 60 cm tank is a very, very, um, uh, what do you call this, a popular size. Everybody likes this size. This is a 20 gallon equivalent tank. Okay. <laughs> now, you can go to the dollar store and get uh, a spatula like this. Or you can buy also the ADA one, which probably costs $200. This one's <laughs> <laughs> But I use this. Uh, it's a $2 thing from a dollar, dollar tree. Okay, first thing we do is uh, we want to make sure that the front side is as even as possible, okay? Uh, if you're participating in APA 
competition. We have a yearly competition, by the way. Uh, it's like this, International Aquatic Plant Layout Contest. If you win, the top prize is 1 million yen, not dollars. 1 million <laughs> Japanese yen. That's about 100,000 US dollars. So it's not bad either. Yeah. 100,000 dollars, not bad either. And if you're, if you're a winner of that grand prize, uh, they, you get to go to Japan and claim your prize. And a lot of people will be envious of you, of course. Um, most of the winners right now are either from China or from Taiwan. Okay. Uh, nobody yet from Canada. <laughs> are they not yet? Not yet. I've been trying to uh, ask people to take pictures of the plant they in here in Canada. All I get is about two or three pictures a year. There are about 4,000 entries already every year of uh, nature aquarium. They take the picture of the, of the tank and then they will submit them in hoping that they will pick out the grand prize. But in Canada, uh, maybe two or three in a year. And sometimes I'm the one who take the pictures because they don't know how to take the pictures, so I will volunteer. Okay, I'll go to your house and take your picture. <laughs> Otherwise, ADA would say, how come Canada no picture coming from Canada? <laughs> okay, so um, the back side, the front side has to be straight, okay, as much as possible. But the back side doesn't have to be straight. Well, it depends on what kind of uh, layout you want to be or you want, you want to, to make. But the most important thing about layout is the rule of, the, uh, the golden rule of thirds. And does anybody know about the golden rules of thirds? I think the photographers here knows about the golden rules of thirds. And basically, you divide the tank into three parts. So you divide the tank into one third, one third, and one third. That's here. And then you also divide the tank one third, one third. Now, the cross section of this vertical line here and the cross section of this vertical line here, that is called what we call the focal point. And most of the time, if you take a picture, if you're a photographer or you're a painter, you would like to put the focal point or the most important object of that particular picture you would like to put there. So it's either here or here. But not in the middle, never in the middle. So you don't put the most important subject in the middle. If you're a photographer or if you are a painter, you never put the most important subject in the middle. It's always to the side. Okay, so in this case also, we want to put the most important object the side, either here or here. Okay, so now, the first thing we're going to do is an Iwagumi one, and we have chosen rocks. And rocks has to be as big as this for the size of the tank. And what we want to do is, we don't want the rocks to be standing up like this. It's too boring, what they call it. Mr. Amaro says, this, if you put the rock this way, it's boring. You don't want to put the rock this way. And you don't want to put the rock also this way, that's also boring. <laughs> so you want to put the rock slanting about this way, about 45 degrees, maybe facing a little bit like that. But it has to be stable enough so that even if there's an earthquake in your house, it doesn't fall. So you have to make sure, how do you make this rock leaning this way but not falling? That's the art of Iwagumi. How do you make the rock arrangement stand this way in a 45 degree angle, but not falling, okay? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put the main stone, this is the main stone, this is going to be a, what we call the main focal point. When people see this rock, they will be attracted to looking at this. And then, yes? Sorry, can we use any kind of rock? Like, can we go out in the forest and buy okay. a Okay, <laughs> that's the next thing that I was going to say. Um, different stones. There are different types of stones. Okay. Yes, you can. You can use any kind of rocks, okay? Except rocks with has some copper inside. Okay. Okay, anything with copper kills fish, and they also kill bacteria, and they would also kill the plants. Okay. So get anything that has no copper. So you have to have it analyzed by a geologist <laughs> and find out whether they are friendly, yeah, you know, fish fine. friendly. That's number one. Number two is uh, there are several types of rocks that are hard rock and there are what we call soft rocks. Soft rocks tend to weather in time 
and they also uh, what do you call this now? They they are very soft. So if it's the water is acidic, which I will explain later why it's important to have acidic water, um, the stones start to dissolve. And if it dissolves, then it will increase what we call the hardness of your water. Okay, in North Bay, in Vancouver, and in Toronto, our water is very soft. The source of water is usually from the mountains or from the snow. But if you go to Calgary, <coughs> their water source is from the deep well. So their water source is very high in mineral content, and that is called hard water. Okay. So what is that? <laughs> Drifting away again. <laughs> but anyway, um, hard water is not good for plants. We want to have soft water. And we are lucky here in North Bay that our water is soft. However, if our water condition becomes acidic, which I will explain to you later why it becomes acidic, then your stone will start to dissolve. And when it becomes dissolved uh, stone, it becomes hard water. So if you choose a stone that is soft, it's okay, but there's more work for you, meaning you need to change more water more often, okay? It's no problem to use a soft type of material, but it's more work to you. So how often you need to change water? Every day, okay? But at least maybe one third of your water needs to be changed every day. Now, if you choose a hard rock like this, this is from Japan. This is called manten. Uh, manten stands in Japanese word is 10,000 days. We call it forever stone. <laughs> because it doesn't dissolve. It's very hard. That's why it's called 10,000 day. 10,000 day stone, manten. Ichiman iwa, ichiman stone. Ichiman is 10,000. So 10,000 day stone. So 10,000 day stone doesn't dissolve in acidic water and you don't need to put a lot of work because you don't need to change water to, because your water parameter stays constant all the time. Okay? All right, so first thing we do before we set this stone into the tank, we need to build up the foundation so that when we set the stone, it will stay in this position. So what we do, is uh, we put some stones where the stone will be leaning on. Okay? So we set up a foundation like this. And we wedge it with the smaller stones. We just put the smaller stones around for us to grab. Okay, so we're going to put the stone So the art here is to have also the lines of the stones almost parallel to each other. If you go to, a, for example, if you go to a bath, you will see that the lines of the stones are actually parallel. They're all the same lines. So you will do the same thing here. So you will see if the lines is going this way, this other stone should also go this way. Okay? The ones you're using as support, are you, would those be considered sacrificial? Like yeah, than, uh, it doesn't have to be the beautiful ones. Uh, yeah. that, uh, those small ones that I put inside are actually not looking good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just put them in and just to make sure that the stone remain in this position. Okay. Okay, yeah. it doesn't have to be look good. But we want to put smaller stones around the base to make it more natural. Because if you go to the mountains area, you would see the big rock like this, and then you would now see the smaller stones around the base to make it more natural looking. 
Okay? Like so. And you can wedge also smaller stones inside so that it makes sure that it doesn't it doesn't fall. Okay. That's it. So that that becomes uh, our Iwagumi already. Okay, now there's three stones always. Three stones that is very important, the main stone and, and two support stones. Uh, when you put stones, the small one doesn't count, but the two big ones and the biggest one counts. It's always in three, five, and seven. Cannot be two, cannot be four, cannot be six. And don't ask me why. <laughs> but that's the Japanese style. So we want uh, a very high back. We want a very high back. Uh, the front doesn't have to be very high, but the back has to be high. Uh, the main reason why when the, we want the back to be high is also it will project a depth. That means the front to back is deep. If we have the front and the back to be level, then it doesn't project the depth or the front to back to be very far. So you want the back to be higher, so it will look so far away. Okay, and you make a small tank look as if it's very big. Joseph? Yes, go so ahead. Going back to the, uh, the hard water issue. Yeah. Um, you were saying how hard water, water would be an issue for the plants? Yes. So if you're, like around here, so if you're in a rural area, mm -hmm. you said North Bay water was fine, but if you're in a rural, rural area and not a well. RO. No other way. Reverse osmosis system. Okay, that's the only answer. Like people in Calgary, no other choice. RO system. You need to get a reverse osmosis system. Water is very soft. Yeah, because a reverse osmosis system re removes all the hardness of water, and then you add in the hardness just right for the tank. Okay, and I'll explain later to you what are the parameters that you need to be looking for. Okay, but you can see now if the tank is this dramatic, right? It says it makes the tank a lot better looking. Okay, and. You can add more uh, smaller stones around the base to make it more attractive. Just scatter the stones, okay? So it will look like as if the stones fall off from the cliff and, and they just scatter all over like that, okay? So that's, that's one, that's one uh, way of looking at it, okay? And uh, then you would plant. What is the plant that you would be doing? And, uh, in planting, uh, we use uh, screwers like this, a small barbecue sticks like this, uh, to, to define the boundaries of what type of plants to plant. You want to plant, for example, at the background. So this is my, my tall plants. I want tall plants at the background. And what does it, uh, what does it signify, this particular tall plants in the background? This will be the trees in the background. So if you look at the mountainscape, you usually have tall trees in the background. So you have trees here. And then in the foreground, you can have another set of trees, another set of plants. But they are low-growing low plants, maybe about an inch tall only here. So they have this circle here that is lower, lower plants. And then the rest here would be very, very low plants. You don't want plants to be growing this top. It's like hugging, it's like a carpet here. So this one will all be low growing plants. Then you would have high plants here. Can you imagine? Yeah, so that's, that's how it is. Okay, so that's one thing that uh, you, can, you can only say, we're done. Okay, in just a few minutes, we're done. Um, you can, of course, uh, leave it like this first. Most people, what they do is, uh, it will take them about two or three times to rearrange the stone again. So they don't want to fill it up with water immediately. You know, uh, ADA tank is a test for patience. <laughs> you, you build it up, then the next day you come back, no, 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 I don't want that. I want to redo it again. So usually the tank stays empty for about a month. <laughs> and then you kind of you know, take a look at how the stones are, are, are placed, are you happy with it? And then when you're really happy, then you start putting plants and then you start filling it up with water and then you put the fish in. So it's all it's in a large time. It's an art. It's an art. We are making art here. So uh, we don't want just to put it in a very uh, fast way. 
Okay? So that's one uh, type of uh, what we call art. Now, if you want to add a little bit more in terms of art, then uh, I'll show you something that is really, really interesting. So this, this stone will remain here in this tank, but I will show you something that will really add more beauty to this particular layout. And I kept it a secret in here. <laughs> it's a small bonsai tree. Okay. And if I put the bonsai tree leaning towards here, okay, we can actually move the stone a little bit and put the bonsai tree, or maybe it's too big, maybe we should remove this. And let's put this one instead. This is another layout too. Maybe it's the wrong side. It's to be this way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so we gotta do it this way. So we're gonna move the stones over here then. And we're going to put the tree next. <coughs> because now we want the other side to be higher. The moss on the tree, and the moss will become the leaves of the tree. And, and then you would put now a low growing plants, short plants all over, so it will be like a tree in a meadow, and that's it. So the moss now looks like this, and I'll show you how it's done. It's just a few examples for you to appreciate. Uh, moss is uh, like the moss you see on the, in the ground, but uh, these are special moss. These are actually uh, water growing moss, and you just put the moss like that. And you can already imagine if all of them are also green, then you will see already the leaves on the tree. That's it. It's as simple as that. Okay? And uh, um, then, of course, the, the rocks, you can also arrange it a little bit better looking. Okay, and so that's how you would make a nature aquarium. And the moss would spread? Yeah, they would grow. And each of these would be moss. And that's it. Uh, it's trimming your moss one? No need to trim moss. Okay. Moss is very slow growing plant. Um, you may need to trim the grass. <laughs> you need to mow them. <laughs> Otherwise, they grow a little bit tall, about two inches tall, and then that's not good anymore. So it becomes taller than the tree. So you want it to be very short. But so if you, you have stronger light, then yeah. it doesn't grow as quickly because it's not as fighting for the light. Yeah. So it doesn't grow as long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but can you imagine already if uh, this green here, what you see is actually all over the all over the tree, so you can see how how nice it looks like. See? Right? You can imagine if this is all green, then it's like the leaves of the tree. And moss is very easy to grow. Uh, no need of strong light. Actually, it doesn't need very strong light, and it it does need a little bit only of CO two, a little bit. Okay. Um, so that's one. Um, another way also, if you don't like to use substrate, it's also fine. You can use uh, white sand or what we call uh, Colorado sand. Um, like this, this color here. Okay, and you can use this sand also instead of the substrate. But you cannot grow plants in it. So your tree will have a sandy base. Okay, which also look nice. So it looks like in a in a desert, you have a tree with moss. That's it, finished. You can even put like the paths if you want. You can even make a path. Yeah, sure. Rocks, yeah. Yeah, but uh, mind you, with sand, okay, uh, please do not get the sand from the sea. 
Yes, the sand from the sea are coral-based sand, and they dissolve instantly in acidic water. And if they do dissolve in acidic water, then it breaks up your mineral content in your water. It becomes hard water. Okay. So let me talk to you a little bit more about the water chemistry now. Is that okay? Okay, because that's very important in uh, making uh, a nature aquarium uh, successful. So I talked about the hardness of water, and I talked about acidic water. Uh, what does this all mean? First is hardness of water is the mineral content. Okay, so North Bay has almost zero uh, mineral content in your water. So it's perfect. You start from there. And then you would add a little bit of mineral to make it 4GH and 4KH. Okay, so it's easy to buy this from a retail store. Pet store sells that. It raises up your general hardness by 4. And it raises up your KH, which is your carbonate hardness by 4. So there's two bottles you have to buy. One is for KH, the other one is for GH. And you buy these chemistry kits. Uh, that measures the GH and measures your GKH, and you add just enough of these two chemicals in your in your uh, tap water to raise it up to 4GH and 4KH, and that's the perfect combination that you need to achieve. Once you have that, your water level is 4KH and 4GH, your plants are going to be so happy. Why? 4KH is very important for you plants to breathe in the carbon dioxide. Without the KH, you won't be able to let them breathe underwater. <coughs> that means they need the KH. But the GH is the general hardness, that is the amount of, uh, of the mineral that they need to reproduce their cells. Cells reproduce, or plant cells reproduce because of the minerals. Without the minerals, they cannot reproduce their cells. So they won't grow, they won't grow leaves. So GH is very important. And GH is a combination of calcium and magnesium, okay? So just go buy the bottle off the shelf, and you don't need to worry about how many percent magnesium and how many percent calcium. Just add it in and make it 4GH. That's it, period. I, I carry that out of my store, by yeah. the way. So Phil carries that because he knows he needs it, okay, in his tank. So if you want to get it from his store, it's, that's fine. Uh, so GH and KH is very important, and then the third one that is most important is CO2. Right. So how do you make sure that you have enough CO2 in your system? Too much CO2 kills all the fish, because they don't like CO2. Oh, fish likes oxygen. <laughs> but too much CO2 kills the fish. Too little CO2 won't make the plants grow. So how much CO2 would you put? How do you measure the amount of CO2? And how do you actually inject CO2 into the water? So usually we have a big tank, the tank that you use to make beer. If you, if you make a homemade beer, they usually sell you also a CO2 tank. And that CO2 tank is attached to a diffuser, which uh, looks like this. Okay, this, this diffuser is for a large tank. Okay, this is for a large tank. Uh, you don't need this size of a diffuser for this time, but just for an example, you see that white thing with white surface there? That white surface here is actually your diffuser. It makes CO2 comes out of that particular white thing, and it comes up in very, very tiny bubbles. Very, very tiny bubbles. The objective of having tiny bubbles is for the CO2 to be absorbed into the water and becomes liquid CO2, not gaseous form CO2. Plants underwater do not breathe CO2 gaseous form. Plants underwater breathe in CO2 in liquid form. That's why it's carbonated water. Can you okay? tell why the ADA ones are so fast yeah. on the market? So there are a lot of copycats also of uh, ADA, because ADA is the first one who invented this and they, 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 they thought of how to make CO2 become dissolved in water using this diffuser. So a lot of uh, copycats started to make the same type of uh, CO2 diffuser, but the difference is the one that is made not by ADA clogs up easily. 
So it means after using it for three, four months, you can't use it anymore. CO2 cannot come out of the diffuser because it clogs up. Whereas in this ADA ones, even for three, four years, you can still continue using it. So a lot of, a lot of people uh, who ask me that question, uh, why, why is ADA so expensive? That's because you can use it longer. Uh, the other side, the other company, they, they sell it cheap, but it will only last you about six months, maximum one year. Then you have to throw it away. You have to buy a new one because not, no CO2 will come out already. It's all plugged up. Okay, so that's the difference. Um, so you diffuse CO2 in here, and then what we have here is uh, you need to count the number of bubbles. So uh, in this particular example here, this CO2 diffuser is the right CO2 diffuser for this size of a tank. Okay, this diffuser here is the right size for this tank. And you can see here that this diffuser has a bubble counter also. That means you can count the number of bubbles per second. How many bubbles of CO2 comes out per second? And again, um, with the right amount of bubbles per second, you can actually achieve the right amount of CO2 for your tank. For this tank, you would need about four to five bubbles per second. Okay, so um, I'll show you. Does the amount of bubbles you need to turn, uh, have anything to do with how many plants you have in the um, Like more plants, more bubbles, less plants, less bubbles? Yeah, so in a large tank, like maybe about this size, four feet tank, My you cannot tank. anymore count the number of bubbles <laughs> because you got so many plants inside, you have to just let it go. Right. Maybe 10 to 14 bubbles per second, which you cannot anymore count. But for this size of tank, you need to be very precise. Maybe five bubbles per second would be maximum here. Otherwise, you gas out the fish. Okay? No. So this one here, you see this, this empty space here is actually where you would fill up with water. And the bubbles will come out from the needle valve here, and you will see the bubbles coming out. Okay. But the most important thing here is not this, but the controller. The one that allows you to count the number of bubbles per second, which is what we call as a CO2 regulator. It regulates the amount of pressure. Okay, there are a lot of brands also again in the market. Uh, I have used many of them, uh, but the best one is still ADA. I'm sorry, but I really need to emphasize that. Why is it ADA? Because it's so easy for you to tweak the number of bubbles per second. The other ones, it's either too many, too many bubbles per second or no bubbles per second. See, when you close it down to the last drop of uh, CO2, nothing comes out already. Then if you just open just a little bit, it's like 20 or 40 bubbles per second. So it's no use. Although it's supposed to be a regulator, it does not regulate the number of bubbles per second. Whereas the ADA regulator, you can really tweak it to the last number of bubbles per second. And that's why it spells a difference. Okay? So uh, number of bubbles per second here, maybe about five. Now, how do you measure that you have the right amount of CO2? It's by checking the pH of your tank. The pH is the acidic level, okay? That's why I said acidic. I was talking to you about acidic water. Your tap water has a normal pH value, 7.0. It it's neither alkaline nor acidic, it's 7.0. Mm. Once you start injecting carbon dioxide into your water, it turns carbon dioxide to carbonic acid, okay? And the carbonic acid brings down the pH to 6.5. That is the magic number. You want to maintain your pH at 6.5 with KH of four and GH of four. That's it, three parameters to think. pH of 6.5, GH of four, <coughs> KH of four. You achieve these three parameters, your plants are just going to grow over and over. I mean, you cannot help but make them grow. Three parameters. GH of 4, KH of 4, pH of 6.5. Okay. Why do we want to achieve 6.5 also? Algae hates acidic water. Okay. If you can maintain your water to have 6.5 or maybe even 6.2, there will be very little algae growth because algae cannot survive in acidic water. They love alkaline water. So if you don't have CO2, what will happen? Your water alkalinity level will start to go up, 
8.1, and that's where algae starts. Okay? Now, if you have acidic water, it cannot survive. It will die. So you don't have algae in the system. <coughs> Number two, if you have 6.5 acidic water, and, and because of CO2, and you have GH of 4 and KH of 4, your plants are going to love it so much, they're going to be eating up all the nutrients it can find in the water. Okay? They're going to absorb all the food that they can get in the water. All the fish waste, urine or caca, everything is okay, absorbed by the plants. And what happens if they have no more food left? There's no algae in there. Because there's no food for the algae to grow. So all the food is assimilated by the, by, by the plants. So there's no algae. That's why we want to have that kind of a system where the plants are very happy. They're absorbing all the nutrient. Okay? So that's the magic formula. After we have already established the 6.5 pH, the KH is 4, the GH is 4, your plants are happy, they're all growing, you would need to feed the plants. You would need to put fertilizer. And that is something that you need to adjust yourself. Maybe you can start with one, one teaspoon of fertilizer a week. Uh, the fertilizer are either from, uh, from Seachem. Uh, ADA have their own fertilizer also, but I'm sorry, I cannot bring them into Canada. Why? Because the Canadian government is charging me $1,000 per type of, of fertilizer. And ADA has 30 types of, uh, of uh, fertilizer. That would mean $30,000 worth of investment. And there is so little people in in nature aquarium that it's not going to be worth it for me to be investing. <coughs> the 30,000 every two years. The, the license to import fertilizers is every two years. So I have to reinvestigate 30,000 after two years. So forget it, I'm not gonna import fertilizer. There are a lot of other substitute in the market so you can get those from the, like Seacan, they produce that kind of fertilizer. Or uh, if, you're, if you really like to get the ADA one, you can cross the border and get it from the U.S. Uh, but you cannot get it by mail from U.S. to Canada because there's an agreement between the Canadian distributor, me, and the U.S. distributor in, in the U.S. not to cross border, okay? Uh, they can sell to you, but you have to send it to a U.S. address at the border. You go pick it up at the border, you bring it in. So that's. That's the end of the story. I cannot also sell to the U.S. I cannot also, if a U.S. Uh, resident wants me to sell to them ADA stuff, I cannot also sell to the U.S. So that's an agreement that we signed. And we have been doing that for the past seven years. That's the idea. So with uh, fertilizer, with the CO2, with the GH of 4 and the KH of 4, you, you have the perfect par parameters for maintaining a tank that is guaranteed to have no algae. Now, what happens if you have algae? <laughs> no matter what. Oh, my tank is too full of algae. Number one is light. Uh, sometimes you have too much light. So you want to uh, lower down the amount of light. Uh, sometimes you put the tank also too near the window. Uh, that light is good enough for this tank. But then you have outside light coming in also, and that also attracts more algae. Um, Light storage during summertime is much longer here in North America than uh, in, in wintertime. So if it's summertime, you may want to close the drain a little bit so that there's not, not much light coming in. So in other words, you want to control, control the light that is shining on this tank. You don't allow outside forces to, to be added into the amount of light here. You want to control. This light is enough, period. Okay? So if there's algae, control the light. Sometimes we have what we call a blackout period, uh, one week or two weeks without any light. Plants won't die, fish won't mind any light. There's no problem with that. So you can black it out for two weeks until the algae disappears, and then you turn it back on again. Uh, during that time of blackout, uh, no fertilizer, no CO2, no nothing, uh, and just black out. And that will remove the algae, okay? Uh, you also need to put some clean up crews. What are clean up crews? You put shrimps. Uh, shrimps are very good in eating the small algae. So they would nip on them. They use their small pincers, pincers to, to, to clean the, the algae. What kind of shrimps? Uh, there are several kinds of shrimps in the market. <laughs> don't, put, 
Don't put the shrimps that you're eating into this thing. <laughs> Those are not the kind of shrimp you put in. It's just talking about the best. Yeah. The best so kind. the best kind of shrimp is named after Mr. Amano. It's called Amano shrimp. So he invented again, he found out again that this shrimp is a very good uh, way of eliminating algae. And that's why it's called Amano shrimp. And it's very popular now in most uh, high-end pet shops that sell these kind of shrimps. Uh, it's expensive because they are supposed to be uh, saltwater fish, uh, saltwater shrimp. They don't breed in fresh water. So they actually live in brackish water, like near the sea. And then they catch them, uh, and then they bring it over, and they slowly acclimatize them to become freshwater shrimps. Okay? So there's a long process of it becoming fresh water, and that's why it becomes expensive. But uh, those shrimp, amount of shrimp, unfortunately, do not breed. So if you bought 20 shrimp, it will remain 20 forever in your tank until they die, and then you have to buy again. Okay? So algae comes in two forms. There's what you call the hairy algae, that means it looks like your hair, it, it stands out like that, and those are very good. Uh, for shrimps. The shrimp will eat them. Okay? Now there's another kind of algae, the algae that is on your glass. It becomes like a film. Those are not hair algae, but they are called film algae. Now those kind of algae will not be solved by using shrimp. They're solved by using snails. So the snails will then eat up the, the algae on your glass. But if you have algae on your glass already, um, I usually just take a, a blade or uh, a wipe, just wipe it off. It's a lot easier than having a cleaned up crew of, of snails because snails do public very fast and you don't like to have a tank full of snails. Autosynclus yeah. is a kind of fish that has uh, like a suction motion in their, their, their mouth. You can use that also. Uh, uh, another thing about algae is that you don't want to overfeed. Okay, when you feed your fish, you feed them only once a day, and it's only a pinch of flakes. That's it. You don't pour in your entire can of uh, fish food in your yeah. tank. Uh, if you do that, you make sure that you clean it up immediately. Otherwise, your tank is going to be suffering with a lot of algae because that's too much nutrient. Too much nutrient that is decomposing in your tank, and that's the cause of algae, is the decomposing too much nutrient and you don't have enough bacteria in your tank that is going to clean up this, this decomposing item. Yeah. So once a day is more than enough? Once a day. Sometimes I even only feed them once every three days. You don't need to feed the fish every day. You know, some people say, oh, poor them, they don't eat every day. Actually, God told us to eat only once every three days. But the guy who came down to earth said, you better eat three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to eat now three times a day instead of once every three days. See? <laughs> okay, so any any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Do we still need some time or you need anything else to explain? No, I think um, just, I mean, that's probably a mouthful for the people that are into the hobby. But uh, just take it slow. And if you guys are interested in nature aquarium, then we'll get you going. Yeah. And uh, you know we'll walk your hand through the whole process. And it's, I've had, I've set up a 200 gallon tank, and it's really not that. Once you have figured it all out, it kind of works. Kevin here has what 12 tanks, 12 nature aquarium tanks. He's got kids, you know, uh, full, he's working full time, and then he's still able to manage it. Once you sort of get that concept a little bit, yeah. then it, uh, you know, you just you have it, you know. So. This is a new idea that's coming to North Bay, and then I have the knowledge of Mr. Joseph, and then he's yeah. passing that on to me, and then I'll pass it on to whoever else. And then if you have friends or other people that are in the hobby or interested in setting something up like that, then we'll walk them through too. So that's yeah. all I want to add. So ADA has several sizes of tanks. If you think that this is too small for you, we can also give you a 180cm tank that's six feet long. Yeah. Okay, that, that can be done too, and you see, you can import that. I have them in stock in Vancouver, and I could ship them over to North Bay, no problem. Uh, we have all kinds of lights, uh, LED lights, this is the in thing now, okay. They also have uh, different, uh, okay, lights. Uh, it's important for you to have lights that are hanging above the tank, and don't have any enclosure. So we don't want to have any hoods. 
because yeah. most of the time you'll be working with your tank. Mm -hmm. And if you have a hood, then you have to remove the hood and you have to remove the light. Mm -hmm. And when you have removed the lights, then you don't see anything anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's best to have a light that is hanging on top of the tank, and then you have your free your hands to free, you know, to, to, to trim the plants or to cut away. Uh, that's the most important thing for lights. You don't want to have a light that is occupying the entire space here because you don't have space anymore for it to work. Yeah. And not too bright. The light doesn't have to be very bright. No. Okay. Yeah. CO2 needs to be shut off when the lights are off? Yeah. Well, they don't need it. Uh, plants don't need CO2 when the lights are off because they stop. They, and, uh, actually, they start, they start breathing oxygen rather than breathing CO2. When the lights are off, plants start breathing in oxygen. So now you have three, three things that are actually fighting for oxygen. You have the plants, you have the fish, and you have the bacteria. Okay? So three things are fighting for oxygen. And in fact, when the lights are off, we usually turn on an air pump. Yeah. So when the lights are off, we turn on an air pump. When the lights are on, we turn off the air pump and we turn on the CO2. Yeah. And I, yeah. I sell, from ADA, I yeah. sell mechanisms that are plugged into the uh, timer on the light. So when the light shut off, it cuts off the CO2. Yeah. And then I have a little air stone that comes and then gives oxygen to the, uh, yes. to the plants, or to the system afterwards. So that, that's very important. Uh, thank you for asking that. Because uh, oxygen level depletes when the lights are off. And that's because uh, uh, the plant starts to assimilate oxygen too. And if that happens, what's the first thing that dies when there's no oxygen? The bacteria. And when the bacteria dies overnight, when there's no bacteria, your ammonia level goes up. And even just for a momentary up of spike or a spike of ammonia during nighttime, that's where your algae starts. Because, ah, there's food, okay, then. It starts having algae. So ammonia, eliminate ammonia, you don't have any algae. But how to eliminate ammonia naturally is to have lots and lots of bacteria. And you don't want the bacteria to die overnight because there's no oxygen. So you want to have oxygen when the lights are off. You want to have the air bubble. So next question is, why couldn't we have the air bubble all the time? Why couldn't we just have air bubble 24 hours so we constantly have oxygen and then we also inject CO2 at the same time? Why couldn't we have that? Very simple. Have you shaken a can of soda? <laughs> and you know what happens if you shake a can of soda and you open it? It spurts out, right? That's the same thing what's happening in a CO2 tank. If you have a CO2 tank that has an air bubble injected, at the same time you have also CO2 the CO2 escapes to the atmosphere as fast as, 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 as if you're shaking a can of soda. So there is no CO2. So what you need is actually a very calm water surface when you're injecting CO2. You cannot have a turbulent water surface because a turbulent water surface would mean that the CO2 would escape. So when you want to put a filter system in this particular nature aquarium, your filter system should be not the one with a lot of turbulent, not the one with the under what they call under gravel filter, where you use air pumps and then the gravel the, the under gravel filters at the bottom of the substrate. You cannot use that because that one have a lot of turbulent in the water surface, and that would negate all the CO two that you're injecting. Okay, so you want to have a very smooth surface of water without any turbulent here while you're injecting CO2. And the only way you can do that is to have a canister filter. That means the filter is at the bottom and water goes in and out through a tube. Well, on a system like that, you probably put a hang on the back of the water. You can also put the hang on, hang on backpack filter in the back, but the water level is so high that it doesn't splash on the water surface. It just kind of... You know, yeah, you want to eliminate the trickle effect. Yes, right? yes, that's right. So you just want to let it go down smoothly to the water. Yeah. So these tanks pretty much like noiseless then? Yes. The so objective is the noiseless tank. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. No, no bubbling sound. Yeah. Except when the lights are off, then you will have the bubbling sound. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go um, with like a river biotope aquarium. 
Reaper by the tub, yeah. So we're gonna have like 900 gallons of flow going through that tank? Yeah. So does that mean that I couldn't use CO2 in it because it wouldn't... No, no. You, 900 gallons per hour is okay. Uh, as long as the input or the output of this of this pipe is below water surface. Okay. Show it's that. below. If it's below water surface, then... Oh, Show the lily pipe, yeah. So safe, um, let me take this out of the box. So, um, okay. have you seen those uh, canister filter that has plastic thing that dangles out yeah. here? Yeah. It looks ugly, right? Yeah. So, ADA comes up with something that substituting your plastic one with glass. So everything you see is glass. See? So you see that the spout is actually below water surface. So as long as the spout is below water surface, you are not creating turbulent above the water surface. So your CO2 remains in the system. Mm -hmm. But if you have the water surface like this, if you have this spout above the water surface, then water will be splashing down and that will create a lot of turbulent. And if that creates a turbulent, that's where your CO2 is going to escape. Okay. You don't want that. You want it to be below water level. Okay. And I also have yeah. those uh, in stainless steel as well. Yeah. I'll so, so that. what happened is that actually Amano Amano doesn't really put the CO the, the air pump at night time because, as I said, he doesn't like the noise. Mm -hmm. So he actually just raised this up, okay. and that already creates the oxygen level to go up. Mm -hmm. But who wants to put it up and down every day? <laughs> My goodness, they have timers here. So you just put the air pump with the timer and that takes care of everything. So that's what I meant. Put a timer on an air pump which turns on when the lights are off and turns on again the lights with another timer. That's it. So he wants it to do it manually because he said, I enjoy it. I enjoy it too, but I don't want to turn it on and off every day. <laughs> so that's the idea. Okay, did I answer your question, Frank? Yes, yes, yeah. 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 So, anybody else? Yeah. So, you see, if it's glass, it's less, you know, it, it looks better than using this black, white, uh, black plastic thing. Mm -hmm. But the glass one also is a little bit tricky because it, it breaks easily, too. And I have a lot of customers who break this glass because they don't know how to clean it properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, yeah. <laughs> so I told them to buy the ADA cleaner, which is like the one they use for cleaning bottles for babies. The one with the brush in it. But it's very soft, so it goes in and out of this tube easily. But Phil here said, no, I can buy that from Dollar Tree. It only takes me a dollar for that. So he puts it in, and the moment he puts it in, it breaks. <laughs> so he saves a dollar on that thing, that he has to buy another $35. Okay. <laughs> what about uh, just having a spare, just taking that and just bleaching water overnight? Yeah, that's, that's the idea. easiest way. That's, that's, the, that's the best way. And like I said, the stainless steel ones are really nice. They're not as nice as the gloss ones. The stainless steel ones are good too. They're, they're low, lower in maintenance. And they also look nice, so it just depends what you want. So what do you mean by maintenance? Well, in time, the algae will start growing on the tube, and you'll see a black thing in the tube, and it doesn't look nice. So what we do, what we usually do, is that like what this gentleman over said here, is that they would remove this and put them in a tub of bleach, and the bleach would eat up all the algae, and then you just wash it off from. Uh, the tap water. And a larger, a larger tank with, yeah. with tall plants that would be very easy to hide behind. Yeah. Plant, right? yeah. Well, then you don't need glass. You just need the uh, stainless steel or whatever. Yeah. 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 Right. That's exactly the idea. Yeah. Okay. okay. So any other question? We're gonna have an exam after this. Yeah. <laughs>